Welcome back, Netherwood family. I'm so glad you're here today in Bible class. I hope you're all fabulous and that your week is going well. We're continuing our lessons on the fruits of the Spirit, found in Galatians 5:22. And I gotta say, watching all of your amazing videos from the past few weeks, you guys have really got that song nailed down. You guys are amazing. So I'm so glad we enjoy that song. So sing a verse of it with me. I'm going to sing coconut, but you can choose whatever fruit you want to. All right, so let's remind ourselves what our fruits of the Spirit are, right? The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nice job. I'll bet you all did great at home. So, so far we have covered love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and today we're going to cover goodness. This one's a tricky one, so grab those Bibles and let's get started today. All right, friends, so hopefully you've grabbed your Bibles by now. Uh, we're going to take a look at 1 Peter 1 15 first. I'm just going to read it off my page here. It says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Goodness is not a word we use a lot today, right? We might hear the word good a lot, right? We might say something like, this pizza sure tastes good, or I'm good at playing baseball, or you better be good or Santa's not going to come to our house this year. All right, but goodness in the Bible is sort of a different ball game. It is a different ball game, all right? It carries a higher standard. It's on a higher level. All right, so this fruit of the Spirit is a quality um, that is a characteristic of God's nature. Okay, we remember how he is good to us, and we allow that goodness to live inside of us and permeate throughout us to help us make um, good, holy choices to become more like Jesus. And Jesus tells us, I believe it's Matthew 7, 17, that we can know the, sorry, we can, <laughs> you can know a tree by the kind of fruit it gives. There we go. So good fruit comes from good trees, right? And bad fruit comes from bad trees. Have you ever eaten a piece of fruit that was gross? Hopefully not. We usually tend to avoid uh, those kinds of fruits. All right, so go ahead and turn in your Bibles to the book of Daniel. And think for a minute, is the book of Daniel in the Old Testament or is it in the New Testament? So let's take a minute to search for that. If you guess that it was in the Old Testament, you are correct. All right, we are going to start in Daniel chapter 1, verse 3, and I'm going to read verse 3 through 5. But first, I want to give you a little background of what's going on in the book of Daniel. So, you probably remember the Israelites, God's chosen people, okay? Well, the Israelites had been conquered by the great armies from Babylon, okay? And people, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon, had taken the brightest young men to Babylon to serve in his court. Okay, and these men, we already know, one was Daniel, one was Hananiah, one was Mishael, and one was Azariah. Okay, they were some of the captives. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he wanted these men to serve him, right? And he also worshipped different gods, and he had different ideas about what it meant to be good. So he placed these young men in a special school, and they had to stay in the school for three years. So he wanted God's people to forget about God. 
so that they would do what he thought was good. All right, verse 3. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, that's a big name, say that three times fast, chief of his court officials to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Ashpenaz was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table, and they were to be trained for three years before that. All right, so this issue of food comes up. Think about the tastiest, fanciest dinner you have ever had in your life. Could have been a steak or fish or lobster or a fancy chicken. And maybe we wrap it all up with this delicious big chocolate cake that we all eat afterwards. Okay, And so that's Ashmanaz's job is, is to feed them well and teach them well. Okay. And Daniel speaks up and he says, well, we can't eat that. We can't eat food from the king's table. And Ashpenaz goes, what? Why? So Daniel speaks up. He says, it's me, Daniel. My friends and I are some of the captives from Judah in your training. The king's offer to eat his food is generous. But God has told our people not to eat some of the foods that the king serves at his table. So the Israelites could not eat certain foods because God asked them not to eat. Uh, we call them unclean foods. Okay. So he says, my friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego all agree that we can't do something that is not good in God's eyes. So Ashpenaz is like, I don't understand, Daniel. Your other friends from Judah don't seem to have a problem with eating the king's food. Hmm. So there are other people, the Israelites, from the Israelite nation, who are with Daniel and his friends, and they're choosing to gobble up the king's food. I wonder why that is. But Daniel says, Oh, great chief, please don't be offended. I can't explain why no one else is refusing the food, but we know what God expects from us. We must do what is good. Let us eat nothing but vegetables and drink nothing but water for 10 days. And after 10 days, you decide who looks healthier, us or the students who eat the king's food. And Ashpenaz is like, but the king has his orders. I could get into trouble. Still, I admire you for your courage to do what you know to be good, even though you could get me, mostly, into trouble. And he says, okay, I'll see you in 10 days. So take a look at Daniel. This was all from Daniel, but let's read verse 15. Let's find out what happens at the end of the 10 days that Daniel and his friends just had vegetables and water. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away the other food that the other students had been eating and gave them vegetables instead. Interesting how that played out. All right, let's pause for a minute and play a quick game. So I'm sure you've noticed over here that I have a bunch of words written on my whiteboard. So let me give you a close up of those. So there are 12 words in all. You good readers, go ahead and read them out loud now. If you're still working on learning how to read, these words are rock, run, volleyball, duck, soup, rose, ace, piano, gravy, blender, avocado, and cantaloupe. Take a look at those words and try to memorize as many as you can. Think you got it? All right. Now, I'm going to take them away. But wait, there's more. We are going to sing a song, and then after that, 
you can tell me how many words you remembered. I'm feeling a bit Christmassy, so let's sing one that we all know. Hopefully you know Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. If not, you're going to learn it now. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Camp Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. All right, now let's see how many words we can remember after we sang that song. So I was able to remember seven out of the 12 words. <laughs> Not perfect. I was hoping to remember all 12 of them, all right? Oh well, how many words did you remember? More, less? <laughs> was it easy or hard to remember the words after you had sung the song? Why? You forgot some of the words, right? We didn't get all 12 because the song distracted you. Okay, so this is exactly what King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar is doing. He is distracting the Israelites from their God. Okay, so some other things that the king did, he took away their names. In verse seven, it says, the chief officials gave them new names to Daniel. Now Daniel is going by Beltajar, Bel Beltajar, Beltajar, I give up. To Hananiah, it was Shadrach. To Mishael, it was Meshach. And to Azariah, it was Abednego. So can you imagine somebody stealing your name and giving you a new one? Sounds terrible. It's like, here's my Eeyore now, and we're going to call him Boogaloo. All right? We're going to take away his name and give him something different. So again, that was something else that worked against their favor. The king also had them learn a new language and new stories. So he came in and he infiltrated the Israelites and took away some essential pieces that made them the people that they were. But guess what? Daniel and his friends did not forget God's goodness. In fact, they stood up for what was right. Have you ever had to stand up for what you knew was right? Or were you quiet and did you hide away from it? How did it make you feel either way? So they stood up to the king and they said, no, we're going to do what God tells us is good. Okay. So he convinced the king's servant to let them eat the vegetables instead of the king's food. So just like Daniel, we can grow in our goodness by staying close to God and remembering his goodness. All right, so some final thoughts as we wrap up. Some of you may have done this experiment before. Okay, all right, so you can get a white flower, any type of white flower. Um, I think carnations work best. Okay, and you can get that flower in a glass of water. And what I've done to this glass of water, hopefully you can see how dark it is, I've added some blue food coloring. Okay, and then you put your white flower inside of that glass and you allow it to sit for a few hours. Okay, and it's gonna sit and sit and sit. And over time, that flower is gonna suck up the water and the food coloring inside the water and it will change the flower a different color so the point of all that it goes back to god's goodness right we're that flower in the water all right and it's our work our pleasure as christians to soak up god's goodness and to just suck it up and allow it to just completely fill us up with all of his good things and of course as we go through these hard times right now we have to remember and keep remembering 
God's goodness towards us, the good things that he's provided for us, the things that we have, the people that we have, none of that is a mistake. God puts that in our lives um, for a purpose. So God is good, as we have talked about before. All right, have a Merry Christmas, Netherwood family. We love you so much and just hope you have a fabulous holiday. Bye.